In this video, we are gonna forge a pendant, but uh, we won't focus so much on the pendant. I got a request um, to show how I use the anvil's edge when I draw out material. So I thought we were gonna focus on that today, because I'm gonna forge a pendant with uh, three uh, points. So I'm gonna draw out some mat material. And there are a couple of ways to draw out material. Mm, drawing out is uh, when you making the material longer, you're stretching the material. And uh, one way is of course to use the hammer face and anvil's face. But uh, this isn't very effective since this surface is quite broad and it's flat. Therefore, you will need a lot of energy in order to move the material. It will also spread in this direction and also this direction. In all direction it will be. I use this for flattening and make it, making a straightening, etc. Um, the, another way is to use the bick or the horn. This got a uh, radius, so the uh, surface here is concentrated. And therefore, it will push the material more this way rather than widen it. But the big isn't, uh, the radius is quite large, so the surface is still, uh, it's not that concentrated. So then we have the peen of the hammer, which is much more concentrated than the bick. And this will move material effectively. That is why blacksmith's uh, hammers often have a, have a straight peen uh, combined with the flat hammer face, since you are first drawing out material, which is very common in blacksmithing, and then you switch and flatten it out with your hammer face. But there is one problem with this. If you're gonna forge with this, you are most likely holding your material on the anvil's face. And uh, this is a heavy lump of steel. It's cold and it will draw out the heat from your working piece. So uh, you will go get less done in each heat when you're holding your piece constantly on your anvil's face. Therefore, you can use the edge of the an anvil. This has a similar radius to the, as to the pin, so it's equally effective. You got a lot of mass, so the energy will uh, be concentrated to your workpiece. And you are holding your material. Let's see here. You are holding your material at an angle, so it's only touching where you are working. And you, you will see how I'm using this method. I'm moving my piece. So in this way, you can get a lot of work done in each heat. So uh, that is why I use this method most of the time, but all of these methods have their places. All right, but I will show you how I'm using the anvil's edge when I'm forging. Just gonna draw out. I need a four centimeter taper. So I then don't need to draw out a lot of material. I'm making a short taper here, starting at the animal edge, and then I kind of like flatting out on the animal face. In the same heat, I will cut it off. I will first make set down. Cut it off from the bar.
One out of three. Next one. and then we are making the set, setting length and cutting off. Just one way to try to slide the long back and forth, so got it a little bit too hot. So I'm taking a bit more material. There is one important thing that I wanna mention here. Might we can stop here and See, it gets quite rough when I'm forging on the edge. It's very important to have a well-rounded edge. Um, you might see that I have grinded my anvil's edge here on both sides. So when I'm drawing out, I'm working here. If I would work where the edge is sharper, these uh, grooves or hollows would be smaller, but also deeper and the radius would be smaller so when I first draw out it would be very effective but the problem is when I'm forging and flattening it, flattening, flattening it out um, there is a risk of making a cold shot since if the holes are too deep the material when you're making it flat, it will fold over itself and then you've got cold shots. So that's why it's very important to have a well-rounded edge when you are using this technique. In general, if you don't need to have a sharp corner, try to avoid it. It causes stress in the material. And this shall be a little bit longer, so I measuring and adding some. So I also want a well-rounded edge. That burn might take a little bit. It is alright. So then I cut it off. And I use both of the sides. And so therefore I've got both sides rounded. Here I also can use the teeth, it might be easier. This. But I'm gonna finish the pendant. This was uh, what I had to say about drawing out today. So I will finish up the pendant and show you the end result.